But um, uh, it looks like our guest is ready. If you're ready, give go ahead and give me a thumbs up. Can you hear us okay? All right, let's go. Let's Ladies and gentlemen, number 73 on the roster, number one in your heart. Oh, the one, the only Mr. Adrian McGee. What's good, Mr. Adrian McGee? What's going on? How y'all doing today? Man, man we're doing excellent. We're good, good, bro. How you doing, man? You with us. Blessed. But uh first, let me let me let me do this because I you know I I gave you that, but we gotta talk about the pancake special. <laughs> we gotta talk about Mr. Adrian McGee and the pancake special. It's what made well, I ain't gonna say it's what made you famous, but it's one thing that everybody talks about. I personally was in the stadium on the day when it happened, September 21st, 2019, against Vanderbilt. Let, let's take a look. All right, Adrian. So I'll say this. That's, that's illegal in 50 states, bro. Hey, that's very disrespectful. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'll say this. A lot of people have a favorite catch. A lot of people have a favorite, you know, saying touchdown run. I've never had a favorite block until then, that day. <laughs> you 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 personally, my son was an Auburn fan. You personally made him an LSU fan that day. So I want to thank you for that. But <laughs> One thing I got to ask, what was going through your mind? Not just on the first one, but on the second. Uh, Well, I can start off by saying I was really – it was. I ain't going to lie. I kid you not. I was messing that whole assignment up the whole week at practice. The whole <laughs> week at practice, I messed it up. I'm not going to lie to you. When I seen the guy coming, something clicked in my head. I was like, wow, this is what I've been messing up all week. And it's crazy because it slowed down so slow. Mm. That I had all my thoughts running, and they were actually processing. Usually, my thoughts don't process; I just <laughs> go off with it. Yeah. But yeah, so he was processing. He was coming around. I was like, "Okay, this is it." So when I hit him, my adrenaline started running. I was like, "Oh yeah, oh yeah," and I kind of like zoned out for a few minutes because I was like, "See, finally, practice starting to pay <laughs> off." You know, I'm on my Evan yeah. Iverson. We don't need practice. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so I flashed out. He zoned out for a few minutes, and I see the other guy. I was like, oh, yeah, I got to get him. He looked too sweet. So, I, you know, I just had to clean him up, too. Pause. But, <laughs> I messed up all week, though. But, you know, I'm yeah. there for the game, though. You met, yeah, like, you did it. You, yeah, you did it when it count, though. That's all that matters. Right, right. Hey, so let, let me ask you a question. Now, when you guys go to your next play, did any one of those guys say anything to you? Uh. Yeah, you know, everybody was like, oh, look at you out there killing people. You know, my, my dogs, you know, hyping me up. Yeah, yeah. But then when we got to the locker room, they was like, you going viral. I'm like, what are you talking about? I'm over here hurt. I done hurt my knee because when we got down there, I, what did we do? We was kicking a field goal, and my knee had went in. So mm. I'm over here getting dark. They talking about you went viral. You all over the place. I'm like, what is y'all talking about? I'm out yeah. there just playing. And I didn't forgot about it, really, to be honest. I really forgot about it because I was so worried about my knee. <laughs> All right, well, let, me, let, me, let me ask you this, bro. Um, how was it How was it blocking for the GOAT? You know what I mean, Joe? Uh, I would, uh, not to hate on any other the, the other quarterbacks I play with, but Joe, I, I like playing with Joe. Because there's one thing, you know, a couple players might not know what to do or a couple players might be in the wrong position. Joe literally knew all 11 positions, where they were supposed to be at and what they were supposed to be doing. So I, I really applaud Joe for that. Um, he always kept us on to it, but we always had that that plan, that plan attitude with us because, you know, if you're playing and you're out there having fun, you're going to do good regardless as long as you execute in that practice. And we made sure we execute that practice in time for the game. We go out there, have fun, and we play ball no matter what the outcome going to be, because we're going to, you know, do what we got to do. Adrian, let me also ask, you know, in, was there a situation ever where Joe literally audible a lot? Or, I mean, was it plays coming in? I mean, how did your offense work for the most part? Uh, the offense, for the most part, you know, we got – we had upstairs that did a pretty good job and always kept us on our toes. But it was a chance where I think after week 
three, or it was a practice, and coach was just like, Joe, if you don't feel comfortable and if you see a different look, go ahead and change it. Because that's how <laughs> comf- that's how comfortable they was with Joe. That's how much they trusted Joe. Joe had the ability to change the plays, and he did whenever it came down to it. Yeah. All right. So, so first off, before you know, so we can continue on. I see we got our man Chris Honey Bun in the building. <laughs> Honey Buns. So, Adrian, I'm gonna ask this question because I know everybody in the chat want to know: Has Chris ever tried to convince you to eat a honey bun with cheese on it? No, nah, I, I ain't heard that side. Of it. I ain't gonna lie, I ain't heard that side of Chris. I got some other stories on Chris. Let me go ahead. Boy, man, you, bro. Let, let's, let's, let's go ahead, Dan, Daniel. Go ahead and get the calendar. We're gonna set up another interview. That's all we're gonna talk about. Is Chris stories. <laughs> let's get it. But and if you don't know, Adrian and Chris are from Franklinton, so oh, yeah, uh, that's the connection. Man. Blake, Blake, also. Yeah. yeah, so, so but, but Adrian, I, I do want to ask you. I, so we started off talking about my favorite memory from, you know, as far as you with the pancake block. What is one of your favorite memories from uh, from the 2019 or actually from from LSU as a whole? Um, I got some on the field ones. I got some off the field ones. But as far as on the field, it was it was a lot. I, I ain't gonna lie. Um, from practices, you know, us getting rowdy at practices and then coming together as a team in a locker room. Um, Georgia for the SEC um, championship. Mm. Uh, I, I, I made a lot of memories and, you know, a lot of them that's going to stick with me forever, but I just can't dwell on one because the whole season was good. Uh, we had a lot of leeway once, you know, things start picking up and coach understood that we're going to do what it takes. Um, so I made a lot of memories and a lot of bonds with those guys. And still to this day, I still talk to at least majority over eighty percent right. of them. Hey, and I, I got a question for you too, Adrian. Now you you went to the White House, man. I got a two part question. You went to the White House. Mm-hmm. How was that? The White House. It was nice. It was different. Um, Yo, Gertie in the White House. That's wild. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was something in my head that said, "Go run around free," because you know you only get this once in a lifetime thing. But then another part was like. If my mama hear about this, you know, <laughs> so, you know, yeah. I'll yeah. let everybody else do their fun. Yeah. Hey, let me ask you this, brother. Um, that that 2019 team, you know, they had all kind of awards. You know, the Heisman, the Belichick, all that. Like, what did it mean to you for y'all to win the uh the Joe Moore Award, the Offensive Line Award? Um, uh, it meant a lot. Um, our offensive line coach Craig, he um he told us, and you know, we got together. And we told him we was like we want to be the best O-line in the in the nation in the world. So you know he pushed us to that point. We all got together Saturdays, Fridays off season, sometimes Sunday, and we'll go over plays and we'll go through drills and we'll ask the younger guys what do they need because at any given moment the younger guys will have to step up. And you know we just we stayed together as a unit. We went to go eat and be fat boys. We went to go eat and be fat boys. <laughs> we we hit we in the gym Saturday. We in the gym being skinny, you know. Yeah. Got our shirt off, uh, doing extra cardio, running routes together, you know. DB mm. wide receiver, just O line, you know, just bringing our bond together, and that made us stronger. And you know, you could tell a younger guy, hey, chill out, cut that out, and he'll you know listen to you because he know what we have to accomplish and what we have going on. So that that actually meant a lot. Um, I'm still sad because one of my one of my the guy that I was playing against, Sadiq Charles, my left tackle, he was um he was having school trouble, so he had to go to school. But we had all took a picture whenever they gave us the award, and I was gonna get it tattooed on me. But it, it it meant a lot because we it was a goal that we had planned and we got it accomplished. So it meant way more than just oh let's just go out here and freestyle and we're gonna do this that and get the award. But we actually worked for it. We put sweat, tears, and grind into it. So it meant a lot. When, okay. when did you know that y'all could win that award? Was it the beginning of the season or, or was there a moment in the season when it finally like, yeah, hey man, we can really do this? Um, I, I could say um after that Vanderbilt game, you know, Lloyd came to me and he was like, you know, you just gave us a big bonus. And I'm like, what you talking about? He was like, for the Joe Moore Award, because, you know, it's the toughest O-line award. And he was like, you really just set the standards high. Mm-hmm. So yeah, he was. We we knew once that we said, okay, we just got to add a little bit more, a little bit more, and just keep going, because yeah. we had it then. You know, just that big push. 
Yeah. Now, it seemed like on that 2019, you guys had a lot of accountability. I know you said before you guys would get together the big boys. Did you guys do that every season, or was it something that you spe- that you guys really focused on your senior year? Uh, uh, we did it every season. It was just the more accountability. Um, you know, you got guys that want to do their own thing, guys that are too hype, or guys that's above each other. Not saying that the guys that I played with previous were any better than the guys in 2019, but once you get somebody to listen to the goal and understand the goal. Uh, things will start rolling more and everybody will be on one accord. And that's what the whole team had as a whole, even outside of the O-line. But it started with the O-line. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The O-line could do it, then the trick off into the wide receivers. They were getting together. They were doing their thing and then cross over the defense. Defense always stayed on it. But it was just everybody on one accord. All right. Not pulling against each other. We're all pulling one direction. Yeah. All right. Hey Adrian, so um and, and fan, you know, people in the comments, if you would, if you got a question for uh for Adrian, you know, saying hashtag SAM. But we do have one question. Have you had blue store chicken? That's the question. <laughs> uh, yeah, I had blue store plenty of times. Um, not to rain on their parade, but you know, I seen something that I didn't like, and I'm mm. already not supposed to be eating, you know, fried food, but I can't knock it. The 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 chicken is way better than what I seen, so I still go back okay. to this day. I <laughs> still right. go back to this day. I always got to look over that and the chicken don't. <laughs> it don't. It don't get no better than that. I even tried making it at home. It just don't. I don't know what they do. Love it. Hey, well, let me ask you too, Adrian. The transition between you know being Wait. coached by Les Miles and I'm Coach sorry. O, what's the difference there? You can repeat that one more time. I was reading that at the bottom. Oh my God. <laughs> Thank you, Casey. Okay. Hey, so the difference between being coached by Les Miles and being coached by Coach O, because right now, of course, you know LSU as a fan base, you know we're going through a transition, and so so are the players. So, what was the biggest, you know, the biggest transition for you? Uh, the biggest transition for me, I would have to say the practices, really. Yeah. Um, you know, Coach Miles, we always had, I think it reached like 22. I think my highest is 27, but I don't want to lie. So I'm going to just put around 22 periods, at least five to eight minutes, resetting the clock, you know, staying out there. I mean, it was practices. We probably stayed out there three plus hours. Jeez. And, you know, that, that – it made us what we are, but at the same time, our body's going to wear down at a certain point. And it's going to be just straight practice. we got to go hard at practice, or we're going to have to restart the whole period over another eight minutes. Or, you know, and, you know, go home, rest, and get ready for all that over and not even worry about schoolwork. With O, it was, we're going to get in here, we're going to do it right. If I see what I want to see, then we can move on. But... Mm-hmm. There's no point of dwelling. It was point, It was times where, you know, he reset the clock, but it wasn't as much as that many periods and how to go about things. You know, we got in, we got out, and we had more focus on schoolwork. And it was – Coach O cared more about schoolwork than practice, but I'm not going to say less did. But he took it easy on us in practice. That way we at least had a chance to go home and see our books and read our books and do our homework. But with Miles, it was just like, I'm tired. I'm not worrying about school. I don't, I don't have my long day. We're going to yeah. figure this thing out tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. But it was a big transition with the practices and the intensity. We had more energy. Guys were into it in practices on the sideline. He made sure guys was into it even. I know at one point after the offense ran a play, even the offense on the sideline to run down and run back just to stay in condition-wise. So it wasn't that he didn't slack up or it wasn't as harsh, but at a certain point it, it did begin easier and things start clicking and guys start understanding more. And it was, I'm pretty sure it was less guys hurt, but you know, you work hard, you push and you know, the outcome. Yeah. All right. So we have a, actually a question from the chat. Um, SAM, was it hard to block Tyler Shelvin in practice? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'd rather pull my truck two, two <laughs> to three miles and try to block Tyler Shelvin. <laughs> I ain't going to lie. Tyler might be big and heavy, but mm. it was some muscle under that big and heavy. You look athletic, too. 
he'll root his legs like a tree. And I'm telling you, it'll be two, three guys. Like I don't it's he's a big guy. It was hard. I can't lie, it was hard. All right, let me hard. let me pick it back off that and ask you who was the hardest person that you had to block while you was at LSU? Mm. Mm. Opposite team or my team? Either or either or yeah. either or I don't think I really had too many bad opponent opponents because I always had an upper edge on them. But you know, what was it? I could still I can still think about that game when we played Alabama and mm. what was that guy? And it was like the dumbest play ever. And I, I give that credit to him because, you know, he got back there, he got the sack. But I don't think I really had too many tough opponents because I don't think too many people was in shape like we were. But as far as it comes to my team, Tyler Shelvin had to be by far the worst. All right. So, Adrian, I, um, I'm from Alabama, and, and Roger brings this up, and I'm going to say, you know, he says, I like how y'all beat up on Alabama. I'm going to say this. Personally, thank you. <laughs> thank you, because, uh, listen, I ain't – I almost people, cried that night. I think I did. Listen, share it too. Pe- people who, who, who have talked to me in, like, in Twitter spaces know when, when Alabama lose and I go to work, it's a funeral. It's um um it's a it, they lost they didn't lost the election or something. It's listen, it's it's so quiet in there. I tell people it's so quiet you, you can hear you know a mouse piss on cotton. That's how quiet it is. So All right, I, I I personally appreciate y'all for for that game and the Auburn game, but mostly the Alabama game. But, yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, I I enjoy that. I enjoy that going in there too and having everybody just all quiet and shit. Yeah. But it it was it was nothing beating them what beating them as bad as we did because we always had the upper edge on them the whole time. Even though the score didn't show it, right. it showed on the field. Right. Right. Hey, let me let me ask you one more question about Joe. All right. So we all know the Miami game when y'all had the little scuffle and and you know he he held the L up and all that. Then the U, UCF game where you know he get knocked down and then he come back and throw three, four touchdowns on like what when did you realize that Joe was different? Oh, you're on mute, Adrian. You're on mute, brother. It had to be um after – was that Vanderbilt? Yeah, it was Vanderbilt. Once he got hit in that Vanderbilt game, it changed a whole lot of – no, not Vanderbilt. Come on, UCF? UCF. UCF, yeah, UCF, it was yeah, UCF. Yeah. And that made a big change, and I was like, damn. Once, like, we started going through the season, I was like, Some, they might have messed up hitting Joe. Like, they, we wouldn't have had the season if he wouldn't have got hit that bad. Mm. But – I mean, shout out to them for doing that. Yeah. <laughs> Let me because you brought up Vanderbilt, um, and, and a lot of people don't know uh, or, or didn't may not remember. Um, there was a point in that game where Joe went over to Vanderbilt sideline, grabbed the defender in the back, and, and whispered in his ear something to the effect of "I'm going to put 500 up on y'all." <laughs> <laughs> what was that like? Because I know Lloyd went and kind of cooled it down. You know, mm-hmm. like, hey, hey, but you know, so what was that like when he came back to the to y'all sideline? Uh, it was it was um it was like a brotherhood thing. It was, hey, you go back over there. We coming for real. Like the whole team will come this time. You know, because it got to a point where you're not gonna touch my quarterback. You're not even gonna touch him like even put a finger on him you right. know we want our quarterback clean at the end of the game if we weren't all white that white better look like off white when the game is over with <laughs> yeah. we took a lot of that serious and when he went over there and you know it was a couple of us over there and we was piling up but he's he's a man he's stand up on his he's yeah he's him he's a big he's a big goat yeah all right so let me, let me ask this um Kind of transition into to now. Um, I don't know how much you know you still keep up with as far as like talking with the guys that are still in the program that may have been, you know, saying with you and stuff. But what what are your thoughts on the? Well, I don't think anybody still left. Um, what Miles? Uh, no, I think Miles said they have maybe eight players or something like that that play okay. on the national championship mm-hmm. team. Okay, yeah. so what what is you know what I'm saying? What are your thoughts on the new staff, or, or have you ever been able to look into them and stuff, or or? Um, I really haven't. Um, mm-hmm. you know, I see the guys on social media, and till this day, even I know last year it was, it was all right, but you know it started to slack off because guys know, hey, I got to get this done to get the next year. I talk yeah. to my friend when I get to the end of the road. But any of those guys know that they could call me up at any given moment, any given time, and I tell them straightforward what's going on, what you need to do. 
hey, you want me to look at your film? I will. I helped Derek last year, even though he was where he was. I helped him last year, and, and I kind of gave him some encouragement. And I was like, hey, you the big guy. Though you really the biggest one out there in that conference. It ain't no way that they should be messing with you or in the same category as you. And, you know, I, I help my lead them on. You know, I, I'm not as much as I am, but I still help others in, in, in the long run. Yeah. Let me let me ask you this too, Adrian. I mean, what was it like? You know, the past. Okay, LSU. We go to 2019, win the national championship, and then the last two years. You know, to have the the seasons that we have, as a former player and as someone, you know, you guys reached the top of the mountain. What was it like seeing your your former team go back down, digress after you guys left? Um, it was difficult. Um, you know, I had people coming up to me. You know, just. You know, just from around my area, you know, hey, do you want to bet or do you want to gamble on the game? And I'm like, nah, um, we, we're going to get it, though. We're going to get it. And, you know, still trying to just give your guys your heart, even though you're not there. You know, still having faith in them, even though you're not telling them. And because they know what it takes and they know what we've been through and what we had to do to accomplish our goals. So seeing that, it's like, did y'all really listen to us or did y'all just like watch us from the back? But I'm knowing they took heave of it and this year I know I know majority of them gonna make up for it because I know they trying to get back to because they enjoyed every moment of that trip we had. Um from all fifteen games all the way up into the White House doing the gritty. So I they they understand and they, they know what it takes. So I'm pretty sure they're gonna bounce back this year. Yeah, I was just about to ask you what you think they're gonna do this year. They got it. They they got it. They just got to click into it and, you know, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Take into what the coach is saying and what the coach is giving them, the knowledge. Yeah. And as long as they listen and, you know, they're not they're not pulling against each other like a tug of war and everybody's on the same side pulling against, you know, everybody else, the outsiders. And that's another thing, leaving the outside social media, Twitter, uh, even not not to take away from y'all, but listening to podcasts when people are talking about you, you know, that stuff kind of messed with a player. That messed with me my first two years, and I wasn't really playing. Mm. But, you know, you, you ain't got no other choice but to hear it once. One person here and they be like, hey, did you see that podcast? Or, hey, did you see what they wrote on Tiger Bait? You know, things like that. As long as they stay away from the media and do what they're supposed to and get their rest, hydrate, you know, keep their body right. We, we got a good chance of going back. Yeah, so I, I agree. You should only listen to the Golden Boot. All right, so <laughs> that's what I heard you say, and we're going to stick with that. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's what I said. <laughs> we got another question. I got a question in. for you, though, eh? Okay, go ahead, Chris. I'll let you go ahead, Chris. I was going to ask you, uh, actually, uh, tell everybody who the best fisherman is. Oh, we're... I think um, Mike Iconelli is the best fisherman by far. <laughs> you know, they got a couple of good ones out there, but you know Mike Iconelli, that's my guy right there. <laughs> but uh, we got another question from the chat. It's uh, it says you like uh, best neighbors and company. Said, do you think uh, they are similar to Chase and Jets in the room? Um, I haven't really had a chance to look at those guys or um, see what those guys had to bring to offer to the table. But I can say as far as Jets and Jamar, they had a competition between each other. But mm -hmm. at the end of the day, they were still the best of friends because they knew, hey, if I don't get it, I know that man going to get it. Yeah, right. But so as long as you competing with your – you can compete with your best friend and as long as y'all don't cross that border or have that animosity towards each other, like he hating on me, nobody's gonna ever lose. Look at the success that those guys brought and the success that those guys are having. So, I mean, if they do what they did and understand what they did and why they did it, it wasn't because he's hating on the next one. But, you know, it, it'll turn out good for him just if they just stay on the right page and have a little competition. You know, yeah, and not get your feelings hurt if the coach sits you down and puts somebody in front of you. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so I, it's, it's starting to get dark out there on you, and I, and, and I know how the mosquitoes get. Uh, so I, I want to ask you, you know, maybe one or two questions. Um, first, what is spring practice like versus summer camp? Oh, spring practice versus summer camp. 
it there's there's no difference. The intensity is still high. The dominance is still high. The being the bull on the field is still high. You know, we take we we had the same energy we had for spring practice, the same energy we had for before game, before Bama, before Vanderbilt. We went and attacked the week the same the whole time, and nothing ever changed. The intensity stayed high. You know, we, we'll feel bad if we only beat a team by three points, seven points, 14 points, because we know we could do so much better. We know we could. But that was another thing. We knew what we did. The coaches would tell us, and we'll go execute it. We'll go straight to the problem and fix it. We wouldn't wait till it get down the road. We took the same approach every week. Nothing changed. Hey, can I ask a quick question? Randy? Oh, yeah, y'all good. Y'all good. All right, all right, real quick. So I always believe that if it didn't rain that Auburn game in 2019, you guys would have smoked them. Do you believe that? Hold on, say that one more again. If it didn't rain that Auburn game, that you guys would have hung up a lot more points than, than you did. No, I don't think – I don't think – I think it would have been the same outcome. Okay. You know, it still would have been good. I don't think nothing really would have changed because we um we had a couple of wet practices and stuff, you know, mm-hmm. some hot practices. We practiced in every element. It was sometimes when we really want to go outside and coach be like, all right, everybody go inside. It's lightning too bad. And, you know, ah, uh, boo. And, you know, we'll still have the same energy. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Right. I got you. All right. So, um one more question, and then, then we're gonna let you, you know, what I'm saying get to some safety because, like I said, listen, I know the mosquitoes, it's like uh, <laughs> they good, they, they ain't too bad right now, they're right. like baby hummingbirds out there. <laughs> Worse, spring, a spring game, uh, versus like a regular season game, you know, the tiger walk and everything. I, I know the crowd is not the same and stuff, but as far as like for the players. You know, get that that first chance to you know be in Tiger Stadium for that year that you know crack helmets. You know, what I'm saying what is what is that feeling like? That feeling, I to this day, all right, going down, walking down Tiger Walk. Excuse me, walking down Tiger Walk. It's all right. You know, you you zoned in or you either zoned out. You you focus on finding your mama giving the kiss before the game, or you all around the crowd recording. Mm-hmm. But. That's all the same, you know, because it's always they got the little walk and the people are always going to be on the gate. So it's the same crowd. It just might be a little louder because the area is going to be filled regardless. What really gets me is walking through the gates, walking onto the field. Mm-hmm. I, I, to this day, I could not explain or try to explain, like find the correct word, find the, the right synonyms to compare it to. I just can't explain walking on the field. It's something you'll have to feel. It's like nothing else matters. The crowd is behind you. You feel like you got a hundred thousand people pulling against just one person. Like they're for you. They don't care about nobody else. And that feeling is just amazing. I get chill bumps thinking about it sometimes. I go back and watch a couple games and I get chill bumps. It's just walking out. It's it's something. It does something to you. It makes you feel. It's not like you're nervous. Uh, you got to go pee, run to the restroom. It's, it's it's really it's something special, and I wish I could I could do it again. Just walk out there. I don't even have to play. I just got to walk on the field. It's it's amazing. That's awesome. All right. Well, Adrian, listen, you have been great. I, I I personally listen. I was looking forward to this like all week when we you know we started playing this out. Uh, mm-hmm. Thank you for you know saying Mr. Honeybun himself. The, the, <laughs> the great, the great, the grape jelly and the grits. Has he ever talk, <laughs> tried to talk to you? Has he told you some of the weird food combinations he's come he, up with? He, he, I try to stay away from Chris. If, I, if, <laughs> if, if it's not about fishing, I don't want to eat with Chris. I'm be looking like Chris. I ain't trying to look hey, like Chris. <laughs> hey, have you ever tried a uh, meat pie? Nah, nah. That see the things he tell y'all, he don't tell me. <laughs> it, don't, it, don't, it don't come this way because. Nah. Ask him about spaghetti, though. He loves spaghetti. No. <laughs> we ain't going to talk about this. <laughs> All right. All right. Oh, hey, man. Adrian, is there anything that you, you know what I'm saying, that you that you have that you're promoting and stuff right now that, you know, you you want us to help you out with, uh, you know what I'm saying, or at least tell the, you know saying, the people in the comments that, you know, to, you know what I'm saying, look out for for your... Um, Uh-oh. not no no promotions right now, but um, I did enjoy it and I appreciate all y'all for having me. Uh, I'll come back anytime, anytime y'all want to talk. You know, I might can get somebody else in here. You know, tag along. 
but I did enjoy it. Maybe we can sit down and have another one. Hey, hey, we look, we look forward to it, and, and we definitely gonna set some up and talk all about Chris. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, thank you. Man, I'm down for it. <laughs> all right, well, hey, thank appreciate you, you brother. ladies thank and you. gentlemen. That was right. Adrian McGee. Yes, sir. Y'all have a good night. Yes, right. sir. Hey.